Hey guys, how's it going? Jason's here. In today's video, let's talk about how to integrate an Axie analog-based PBX with Yaster S-Series VoIP PBX. Before we get started the configuration part, let's figure out the benefits of the integration solution. Company can keep using the existed PSTN number, realize internal costs among all extensions of both PBX and external costs available for all members and enjoy reach call features with unified communications on IP PBX. Therefore, existed investment is preserved and communication efficiency has been increased. Now let's jump in and check this out. Take this scenario as an example. Generally speaking, this is how Alexa PBX deployed. With PST line and analog phones connected, while S-Series PBX is supposed to be installed in this way connected to the internet and together with SIP terminal devices. Let's finish the integration step by step. In the beginning, finish hardware installation and connection. Install modules on the S-Series PBX to expand FXO and FXS ports. Once finished, deploy the device in our local network environment. If you want to learn more about the hardware installation, please check the linked video. Prepare an analog line with the RG11 interface. Plug its one end to an FXO port of the Alexa PBX, usually called a line port or a seal port on your PBX. And plug the other end to an FXS port of the Yaystar S-Series PBX. To ensure smooth communication between both PBXs, we can use multiple lines to connect them in the same way. In the last step, connect the PST line to S-Series VoIP PBX. That was all for this part. Let's keep going on the web GUI setup of Yaystar S-Series PBX. We're gonna finish some preparation work first. If you're familiar with that, you can jump to the integration of Lexi PBX and S-Series PBX directly. Open a web browser. Enter the default IP address of Yaystar S-Series VoIP PBX, which is 192.168.5.150. Press Enter. We've come to the login interface. Here's the default admin's login account information. At the upper right corner, we can also select the system language to a proper one before logging. Now, click to log in. On the first time logging, we can follow the configuration wizard and finish basic settings to make the telephony system work. But we will skip that and start from the main menu directly in this video tutorial. Click the icon up here, choose my settings. Change the default password to a much stronger one to protect your phone system. Enter the default password and set your new password. Type in the new password again to confirm. Besides, set a valid admin's mailbox, so the system will send notification messages to the admin's mailbox. Click on Save. Log in again with the new password. The next step. Configure the network interface according to the local network rules so the PBX will work normally in our local network environment. Change the default IP address to the one you want to assign to this equipment. Let's take this IP as an example. Fill in all the information here. Besides, we can decide if we want to use only our LAN port in single mode or both of our LAN port and WAN port for their separate network in dual mode. And we have bridge mode. In bridge mode, we can use two ports, like a switch with the LAN port connected to the upstream, while the WAN port to the downstream. Anyway, once we're finished, just click on save and reboot the device. Wait a few seconds, enter the new IP address and log in again. Choose settings, go to the system and find the date and time. Set the time according to your local time, select the time zone for your location. Decide whether to enable daylight saving time. We've got two methods to configure the exact time. The first one, synchronize with NTP server. If the PBX will have access to the internet, enter the address of a certain NTP server, so the time will be synced with the NTP server automatically. Or instead, set the time manually. Anyway, don't forget to click on save and reboot the system to make the changes work. Find voice prompts. Choose System Prompt. By default setting, the one in the local language is available for most areas. If the default language is not suitable for you, click here to download a proper one. And next, 
find the email setting page. Assign an email server to the PBX so it will be able to send emails. Fill in the email account information as well as the server information. Now we're going to create extensions. Go to extension setting page. Say we're going to create these extensions. The five SIP extensions are for the SIP terminal devices, such as Link soft phones. The FXS extension is for the Laxa PBX. By default, some extensions have been created. We can edit them directly. Click on Edit. Customize the name and email address for the user. Click on Save and Apply. Do the same settings for the rest of them. As for the analog extension, set a name for it. By the way, the default extension name range is this one. If you want to redefine it, go to Settings, General, then Preference, and change it here. Now let's get back. If we want to create more extensions, click Add to create a single one, or click Bulk Add to create a bunch of extensions. Set the starting extension number and the number of extensions. Back over here, we can also use a CSV file to create a bunch of extensions at the same time. Click here and download a template. Open it, we can start editing it directly. Once finishing our work, upload it to the PBX and all extensions will be listed here. We have extension numbers, so next, have them work. Set activation mails to the SIP extension users. Go to the main menu, find Lancus, enable the app, check the Lancus cloud service, like VPN that secures your system. Enable Lancus for these users and send activation mails to them. They can use the login information included in the email to log in their Lancus soft phone. We'll show you that once we finish configurations on the PBX. As for the FXS extension, simply confirm its connection status. Go to the main menu, choose the PBX monitor. It has been connected successfully. Let's carry on. To make phone calls, we need to confirm the PSD Online's connection status here. It's also connected right. Now get back to the settings. Choose Call Features and Ring Group. Create a Ring Group. Choose all extensions to the list. Go to Call Control. Create rules for incoming and outgoing calls. In outbound routes, click on Add. Name it. Select the trunk and all extensions. Save and apply your settings. Now turn to the inbound route, click on Add, name it as Euro. Choose the trunk and set the destination to the ring group created just now. Click on Save and Apply. We've finished our work on the Asterisk VoIP PBX. So the last step, let's see how to log in Lancus soft phones. Well, for extension users, they can use Lancus on the Android, iOS, Windows, as well as Mac, which turns the mobile and computer into a remote extension of the PBX and get them connected anywhere, anytime. All employees can join rich telephony and collaboration features. They simply need to download Lancus mobile client from App Store or Google Play, or install Lancus desktop client on Windows or Mac by clicking the link here. Open an activation mail, we could scan the QR code to log in Lancus mobile client and copy the login link to log in Lancus desktop client. Now, our extensions can make internal calls to each other, make outgoing calls through the PSD online. Incoming calls from the trunk will reach all internal users. Alright guys, guess that was all we have for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Get more details? Check our document center, and I'll see you guys in the next one.